all of my life. Let me tell you a story. He's been good, the Lord, all of my life. Let me tell you a story. He's been good, the Lord, all of my life. Let me tell you the story. In the fullness, in the fullness, yes, in the power of your, you live in me, you lift me up. hands. Let's sing together as the choir leads us. Swift, swift transition.
praise the Lord. Good afternoon, Pleasant Green. Amen. Our scripture for this afternoon will be Romans 10, verses 1 through 10. Romans 10, verses 1 through 10. Let us read together. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses described the righteousness which is of the law, but the man might which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith the word is nigh in thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach that if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the mouth man, and with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. May God continue to add his richest blessings to the readers to the hearers, and most certainly to the doers of his word. God bless you.
Hallelujah. Come on, let's make some noise today. We bless God, we bless God, we bless God. We come into his house to lift his name. Now I know we can praise God. I, I know it's not Sunday morning. But the spirit of God is still moving. I don't know about you, I can feel it on the altar of my heart. Jesus Christ says that God is a spirit. And they that worship God will worship God in spirit and in truth. And I know that because you are here on Saturday afternoon, I know you can worship him anywhere. Amen. You can worship him anywhere. Brothers and sisters, uh, we uh, don't want to monopolize your entire afternoon, uh, so we'll get to the word of God. Amen. You all always do it for me when you sing that song. He has done marvelous things. Amen. And I can still reflect upon Mother Katie Ward. Amen. And she hit that high note and, and she does it for us. Amen. Amen. Again, we want to go to the word of God and um, we're thankful to see all of you here today. Uh, we'll go to Matthew. I know a lot of you want to go get your beads and maybe you want to enjoy some of the carnivals and the festivities. Uh, but We want to understand that our mighty God is before Mardi Gras. Amen. Our mighty God is before Mardi Gras. Amen. Man, so we, as we understand the season that we're in, we have left uh, the Christmas season. Epiphany, now we're at the precipice of Lent season. And sometimes, brothers and sisters, what we try to, how we try to celebrate God, many times, um, many times uh, unbelievers try to take our celebration and turn it into something else. So we want to go to Matthew, the fourth chapter, and understand uh, why we move into a Lent season. Why we move into a Lent season. Matthew 4, 1 through 11. Then after Mardi Gras, it's, it's a joke, y'all. But then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if you, if you really the son of God, command that these stones be turned into bread. But Jesus answered and says, it is written, man shall not live by bread 
alone. But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up to the holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the, of the temple said unto him, If you are the Son of God, jump off. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall raise you up. Lest at any time you should hurt your foot on a stone. Jesus said unto him, Again, it is written that thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taketh him into an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all of the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, and saith unto them, all these things I will give to you if you would only fall down and worship me. Then saith unto him, then Jesus saith unto him, get away from me. Or your version may say, get thee hence. Another one may say, remove thyself. But it says, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall I serve. Amen. Y'all look quiet today. I know it's Saturday. I'm teasing. We just want to use as a subject as we worship here together, conquering the wild things. Conquering the wild things. My brothers and sisters, as we all know, um, this is a season where we engage something called Mardi Gras. Brothers and sisters, this has been a long-standing um, tradition, and I share with you uh, that as we look uh, at this tradition, uh, it reaches back into the annuals of history. As a matter of fact, if you understand it, you know that it appears not only uh, in scripture, but it also appears uh, in the history of the church. So much so uh, that we understand that Mardi Gras at some point uh, was a pagan celebration. And brothers and sisters, and that the Catholic Church was unable to stamp it out, so therefore they incorporated it into the Christian way of life. But brothers and sisters, I share with you, although we have moved centuries from where it was then, and we know that it is a celebration of culture, what I do want to share with you is, brothers and sisters, don't allow the celebration of culture to get in the way of the celebration of Christ. I wish I had some help here. Brothers and sisters, again, I share with you that uh, uh, we celebrate or we go and we do these things, but brothers and sisters, I don't want you to become so enamored with the celebration that you forget about the Savior. So God calls us to a certain place. and We understand that Mardi Gras uh, is French for Fat Tuesday. 
In other words, brothers and sisters, Fat Tuesday meant that they would eat all they could and uh, they would indulge in all they wanted. And then the next day, which is called, brothers and sisters, uh, the Wednesday, which starts the Lent season, they would indulge all they could on Tuesday, but then on Wednesday, they would pray for 40 days for God to forgive them for what they did on Tuesday. Again, I'm not saying that we can't celebrate. Because, brothers and sisters, that was a long time ago, is now more about culture and the mixing of people. But again, I don't want you to allow a celebration to get in uh, the way of your relationship with Jesus Christ. That reminds me, brothers and sisters, about when I was young, I read a book about the wow thing. Wild Things, brothers and sisters, is about um, a young boy who dressed up in an outfit, a wolf costume, and he wreaks havoc uh, throughout his household, and he did so many things, so many issues came up in his life, brothers and sisters, that his mom and his dad sent him to bed without his supper. Hence, Mac's bedroom undergoes a mysterious transformation. And it turns into a jungle environment where he winds up sailing to an island that is inhabited by malicious beasts known as the wild things. Y'all walk with me, I promise we'll get out of here. But it was not until he was sent to his room in solitude, it was not until he was by himself in the privacy of his own playroom that he was able, brothers and sisters, until he encountered the transforming power and I share with you, brothers and sisters, that's sometimes how God does us. It is not until God sends us to our rooms. It's not until God sends us to those places of solitude. It is not until God sends us to the privacy of our own praying ground until our lives begin to change. And as the story goes, after successfully mastering the chaotic wild jungle, uh, after uh, mastering the trial, Max was deemed a king of the wild things. And as with the story of Max, we also discover a parallel within our text. Jesus Christ was also sent into the wild. Jesus Christ is sent into the wilderness by his father because his father wanted him to master the wild things. And brothers and sisters, if you would permit me to say that all of us at some point or another in life will have our personal encounter with the ravenous and voracious wild things of life. There are some things that we will face in life that we cannot conquer until we get on our own. Yet as Jesus conquered the wildness or the wilderness encounter, Jesus also became king. What a hopeful exclamation that no matter what wild thing threatens you or terrorizes you, know that Jesus is the king over them all. 
No matter what you go through, no matter what wild situation you face, I want you to understand that Jesus is the king over them all. No matter what weather we face, I want you to weather your weather and understand that God controls all things. Might I suggest that Jesus also grants us power as we model his fast. Brothers and sisters, I suggest to you today that as Jesus fasted and he is God incarnate, I want you to understand that we also must fast. If you really want to become a reflection of Jesus Christ, if you really want to be like him, I think you ought to do what he did. So if Jesus fasted for 40 days, how much so do you think we ought to? If Jesus fasted, I think it would be helpful for you to do it too. That's why we recognize the Lent season. Lent season is giving up something so that you can welcome in Christ. It doesn't always have to be a food, but perhaps you want to give up a certain TV show. Maybe you want to give that particular time, that 30 minutes, I don't know what you watch. I really wish I could call out what you watch. I go down the road. Somebody like to watch Empire today. But brothers and sisters, maybe you want to give up some things so that the God who created all things can come into your life. And he'll make you a conqueror over the wild things. The Apostle Paul says it's like this. Know that in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So brothers and sisters, as we, uh, I'm a little hot, y'all. I'm not taking this off like I'm about to tear up the church. Don't, don't get that. As a frame of reference for our fasting because Lent originated as a mirroring of Jesus Christ. Mirroring of Jesus Christ, 40 day fast, in preparation for his ministry, crucifixion, and ultimately his resurrection. In other words, brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ fasted because he desired for his ministry to be successful. He wanted his crucifixion to be meaningful. And he desired for his resurrection to be impactful. Might I suggest to you that if you really want to be a good reflection of Jesus Christ, you ought to be willing to not only learn about his principles, but you ought to be, uh, you ought to want to imitate his practices. I think that should have got a few more amens. If you really want to be a good mirror of who Jesus Christ is, you ought to not only want to learn about his principles, but you want to imitate his practices. Christ is the authentic image of perfection for the believer. In other words, I know we hear some things in scripture and sometimes we get confused, but the way I understand it, because one of the things people talk about, they talk about tithes, they talk about offerings. They, they say, oh, well, Exodus says this, uh, Paul says this, but what does Jesus say? Jesus settles it all for us. 
So Jesus is the ultimate mirror of perfection for the believer. And as believers, we ought to be a worthy reflection of Jesus Christ. For to follow his perfect example is to recognize and honor our Savior. For when you follow his perfect example, when you imitate his practices, he'll make you to be able to conquer those things you thought were unconquerable. Nevertheless, as we desire to conquer these things, first of all, I want you to see in the text that there is purpose in the process. There's purpose in the process. Next time we have Saturday service, we're going to get some Starbucks. And <laughs> There's purpose. There's purpose. <laughs> There's purpose. We're going to do uh, uh, kinesthetic exercise. Turn to your neighbor. And tell your neighbor, say, there's purpose in the process. All right, amen. Verse 1 says that Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. He was led into the wild to be tested. Eugene Peterson says it like this, Jesus was taken into the wild by the Spirit for a test. In other words, Jesus he, he went into that Lent season because the Lord wanted to test him. And he says the devil was ready to give it. I want you to know that any time that the Lord tests you, the devil is ready to give that test. The text says that Jesus was led there by the Spirit. In other words... It was by divine design that you face some ups and that you encounter some downs. It is by divine design that you not always stand on the mountaintop uh, of, uh, uh, of cheerfulness, but sometimes God puts you in the valley so that you can be tested. You know, a cake, it does not uh, bake until you put it in the oven. I ain't never seen no cake come out whole and ready to eat without an oven. If, if you know how to do that, please talk to me. So we've got to go through a particular Test. We've got to go through a divine design. Like John, Jesus had to exhibit the confines of society for his supernatural encounter with God. You, you, you cannot have a supernatural encounter if you are always among people. In other words, what I'm sharing with you is sometimes God wants to get you in private. Brothers and sisters, the last conviction that emerges from this text is that there is that per persistence produces the promise of protection. In other words, if you continue to persist, God will protect you. Verse 11 of the text says, Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. In other words, the test was over. The, def the devil left him. And in his place, angels came and took care of Jesus' needs. Jesus persisted in the word of God. And brothers and sisters, you have to Persist in the word of God, and when you persist in the word of God, God will come and take care of your needs. David says it like this, I have been young, 
And now I'm old, but never have I seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed to ever beg bread. When you trust in God, you obligate God to take care of you. The door of the church is open. Mm, all of my life, let me tell you a story. He's been good, the Lord. Mm, all of my life, let me tell you a story. He's been good, the Lord. Mm, all of my life, let me tell you. 